Hello YouTube. Um, I want to do an in-depth talk here about the Usyk Dubois fight last night. Uh, this is going to get deep because I believe it's way bigger than boxing and way bigger than the fight itself. Um, I did not get to watch the fight live as it happened. Um, but I got to see the fight online after the fact. I got to see the post-fight reactions. Uh, so let's just get into it. Um, this morning, uh, when I cut the internet on and looked at YouTube uh, to try to, uh, and Twitter to try to gauge what people thought about the fight, um, I, well, the first thing that popped up on me was, uh, Danny Christie doing a, uh, hit, doing a video with his take on what he thought happened. And he made a very interesting point to me that, um, about the rules and I've known the rules and unless they were changed for this specific fight, uh, the rules are the rules. Uh, we've had changes in boxing rules over the years, uh, but I've never heard. Now, this is just me. Uh, since the early 19, very early 1970s, late 60s, uh, I've never seen any change to this rule, and that's the low blow rule. Um, and I agree with Danny Christie 100%. Uh, but let me try to explain it a little more in depth. Um, and trust me, hang on here, folks, because we're going to get into a point here where I truly not only believe, I know God is trying to show many, many people things through sport right now, today. And we'll get there soon. We'll get there by what Usyk's team does and a whole lot of interesting stuff. And it's Especially if you are a follower of Christ, you'll want to listen to this. All right. You got a line. If you'll notice some guys, now I'm leaning up here. If you see me here, excuse me, my jeans are Cloroxed. Uh, you got your, uh, my belly button, my belly button's right here. So you see all this up here, you can hit the belly button or in many cases, just below the belly button, not the belly button itself, but you could about stick two fingers, uh, depending upon how big your fingers are, at the bottom of your belly button and you would be cleared there because you've got to be able to hit someone right here. This is... This finger is on my belly button. I've got a finger here, which is this finger. You've got to be able to hit someone around here. If you can't, most of the side liver shots that hit the lower portion of the liver, depending upon how the liver sets in the other boxer, uh, because everyone's liver is not in the exact same place inside the human body. It's, there's some differences there. 
a plethora of differences there. Uh, but you've got to have that space to be able to hit. Now, another example. All right. My index finger is here on my belly button. I've got this finger here. All of this should be clear. All of this. Right here. All right. And when the boxers old, you see this every day. I've had people do it myself. Pull those damn trunks up. And you try to give the appearance in the action of the fight that the referee can start warning for a low blow, even if they're not a low blow, even if it's not a low blow. There's 101 different tricks in boxing to skin a cat. Uh, and there's and then another guy's got another 101 to skin a cat over here, and another guy's got another 101 to skin a cat over here. So, but let's say the line is right here. The, now my hand's going to be shaking now. You guys know I have Parkinson's disease. I'm doing pretty good today. Uh, well, let me hold my right hand up here. So the line is right. This is the line. All right. Hang on a second. Just going to do something to give you guys uh, a good example. If the line is right here, this is the line. And the guy's hit you here, he has not hit you below the line. He's, a portion has been below the line, but that is not considered a low blow. All this uppercut crap, that, and we'll get to that in a minute, that, we're that the Usyk team was talking about. Uh, if the portion of any, any portion of, the, that's why you always see when you're watching, they, yeah, they love blowed my guy, they love blowed my guy, they love blowed my guy. And, and the referees are not doing anything, right? And everybody gets so upset about that. Uh, there's a reason behind that. If the line's here and the strike comes here, that's not a low blow. And that's what happened. And Usyk's belly button was under the trunk line, under the... Uh, are over his his boxing trunks were over his even his belly button and that was a clear legal blow there's no other way to define that the team tried to do some other things to the well we're going to get there all right so i believe that daniel du dubois uh should have won that championship. Now, as Dubois, uh, it, there's a lot of variables here. It, if Usyk may have been putting on to get some time in the beginning, but we have a problem there. If he was doing that, he kept saying he was ready to go, and the referee kept convincing and telling him to take the full five minutes. Now, that's part of how you know the fix is in in boxing. And I I tell everybody, you you should go look up the, how, how boxing fights are fixed with, with Teddy Atlas because he's got it all this down pat. He's probably the best at knowing how they do this. So... Uh, that variable in there and then Usyk complaining he's hitting me low and seeing 
punches come in from the side. Now we're speaking from the side, hitting like this, and the referee uh, kept warning Dubois. Uh, U16 tried to say, well, he wasn't deducted a point for the first one because he's supposed to get a warning for the first one only. Uh, no. If the fighter, uh, 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 that's subjective. And what I mean by that is it's a little open to interpret, but a lot open to interpretation by a referee. Uh, so they're not always not taking a point from. You can go back and look at fight after fight. When a fighter's been knocked down, it's the first time there's been no warnings due to a real low blow. And someone's down and wincing and rolling, you know, going on their side on the ring as Usyk was. Uh, there's always a point taken. Doesn't make no difference if warnings were given or not. And I, maybe in some fights it hasn't, but you go back and you look. I've watched more boxing matches over four and a half decades to know about a little bit about this. Uh, and I've had guys in them to know a lot about uh, a little bit about this. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at anything. Uh, everybody's an expert today, so why should I be one? We're going to move over to the post-fight reaction. All right. No, one more thing. I don't think Dubois could have beat him uh, at any point if or it's not at any point. It's possible Dubois couldn't have beat him uh, if Usyk had went down and it would have been a 10 count and him made it up by the 10 count. Uh, if he would have went dead on him, maybe so. But Dubois was losing the fight, but you don't lose the fight uh, to a referee. And the other thing is, the referee took the time out, had the time to look at the low blow, which was being replayed all over the monitors, and he had the discretion to reverse that calling. And he could have just gave, let, said, hey, I gave you the time, but I'm reversing the calling on that. Or really, if he reversed the calling on that, which he should have, he should have awarded the championship to Dubois and let U Usyk's team contest it. Uh, it's just as simple as that. It's not very complicated. Uh, Dubois, uh, Usyk's team started laughing and saying, well, it's within the rules if you like bare knuckle. <laughs> and I didn't appreciate that. And that was a flippant remark coming from some evil people. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, what I've just told you previously has nothing to do about feelings or animosity or the sight of evil or anything. That was just the rules. Uh, their team and Usyk, uh, Usyk showed his ass last night at that press conference in a calm way, <clears throat> not in a crazy way. Uh, the manager guy of him it's not the guy that trains him, but his manager, that guy. They, he's got that guy and he's got another guy that interpret for him into English. I don't know which one's which. Uh, don't care to know, but they're always there with him. And uh, he starts 
one of the first questions was, do you believe that was a low blow? And they asked somebody in the audience that's obviously a Usyk person, what do the rules state? If you hit the line, you're disqualified. You know, if the line's hit. Now, folks, let me show you this. That would disqualify on my body this much of my body going around here. Yeah, let me do it like this. This much. Because you'd be striking my line right here. So look at that. That's how much of my body you could not hit. You couldn't nowhere around here. Look at this. You couldn't even give me a kidney shot. It's not true. It's a damn lie. So then, when that when that excuse started falling apart right out the, out in the room, uh, the fatter guy started saying, "Hey, you know, we talk in there in the back with the referees, which they do uh, uh, extensively." Uh, before the fights at some point. A lot of time it is not right before the fight. A lot of times the referee's not there talking about it 30 minutes, an hour before the fight with this fighter and 30 minutes, a half hour before the fight with the other fighter. That, that's not how that goes all the time. Uh, in some cases, it's the day before, and they go have a sat down in a meeting with each fighter, and they explain the deal, and all these things are thoroughly explained, and I guarantee you none of the bull hockey that was said by that team, Usyk's team, uh, after post-fight uh, was told to them. I know it wasn't. And if it was told to them, it would have been told to Du Bois Camp, and Du Bois Camp would have said, oh, no, 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 no. And more than likely, Usyk's team would have said no to that, too. Because you just get in, you, you could just give a fight to whichever, the referee could just give a fight to whatever fighter he chose. Uh, every time the belt line was, was hit, right? And he could do that subjectively, see. So that team last night, we're going to get into a little politics of the of it. Uh, I liked to when he was coming along. Uh, I don't think. Usyk genuinely in his heart is, is like a bad person or anything, so don't misunderstand me. But I had a problem with when the Ukrainian-Russian war started because Usyk got up in all this military garb and made it appear in the headlines said he is fighting in the front lines of the battle. He never went to the front lines of anything for 10 minutes. The appearance of it was so, but that did not happen. It was not real. <clears throat> he then went on a Hollywood tour and spent an extensive amount of time in Hollywood with these bleeding Hollywood liberals that love every debauchery in the book and partook with them and praised them and all their filth and then would turn around the other way and tell the Lord about Jesus Christ. And that offends me. We were talking about the other day uh, to reach my son's, one of my son's training partners to get that, a lot of you call it the eye of the tiger from the Rocky movies, <clears throat> and it's to get the anger in you and turn it and, and make it work for you, and uh, uh, a damn sure quick way for me to turn it and bring it out and hold it constructively 
is when I think about what they did to Jesus. That angers me. And if you are a Christian and uh, you you have a problem that that angers me, maybe you should go really reassess what you think is right and wrong. And I seriously mean that. I don't mean it to offend you, uh, but many people today, they're religious. Uh, and I'm not saying don't go to church. I'm not saying none of these things. But the thing I am saying is this professing of Christ and most of what you see today in professing Christ is uh, they have a Christ, but it's the false Christ. And they're some of the people, there again, I always go back to this in Romans chapter 1, that God says he put the blinders on because God does not like them. Isn't that amazing? God says, hey, I don't like them, so I'm going to blind them because I don't want to live with them. Yeah, go. Depending upon what translation you got, because these translations today are horrible. You know, they make you think, well, this is easy to understand. No, they're, that's not real Bibles. They're, they're being translated grossly wrong, grossly wrong. Uh, but we're going to get off of that. Uh, so I had a problem with them doing that. But what, what he did yet, yesterday, he even said, who is saying this is a low blow and I shouldn't have a championship? I want, I'll give him a rematch. We'll get in a street fight. And he wasn't being flippant about this and his funny self, uh, you could see the anger in him that someone would dare question him. He's turned Hollywood elite. Talking God out of one side of his mouth and uh, being entitled, I'll dare you question anything with me out of the other side of his mouth. It's already happened. And uh, it's sickening that this kid was well, grown man now but that this good young kid has been manipulated by the people that he's been, been manipulated by uh, older uh, older like as in back in time older Usyk uh, uh, would have never behaved like that and uh, he would have questioned a decision like that, period. All right. Now, what's required to beat Usyk? Not much. See, uh, most of you are saying, oh, my God, the way he pivots his legs. Oh, my goodness, his chest. Let me tell you all something. This is for you young guys. If you make D's and E's, uh, in other words, because people grade different in different countries, and we've reached a lot of countries here. If you're, you know, where they rank the poor students in academics and you're not that smart and it's hard for you to catch on, or maybe you're just inter disinterested or whatever, and you don't know how to play chess. And they've told you. They've, they've, they've stuck a square table up. They got a chess board on it. And the chess pieces are up. And they take you into a room. And on the other side of that table, there's a guy with thick glasses on. He's got his pocket protector and all his pins in there. And you know this guy's a smart guy, right? Okay. Don't take your ass in there and set down young boxers and try to out chest that guy. You can easily beat him, right? And here's how you beat him. 
you go in there really aggressive, flip that table over and pound his face or body till he submits or he's unconscious. Easiest kind of fighter to fight. I believe at any given moment from, I'll say, 1970 to 1986, any fighter in any division in the top 10 would beat any champion today. Yeah. The aggression in the sport is gone. Yeah, you, you know, most of you, you look at Deontay Wilder, who's only got a right hand. He's, oh, boy, oh, God. Oh, man. So they say he's the hardest hit. That man ain't even nowhere close to being up to being able to punch like Ernie Shaver, Sonny Liston, and, uh, or, or Mike Tyson. And uh, You are being sold a bad bill of goods here, young boxers. Don't buy into this junk. Just don't buy into it. Uh, Marvin Hagler said it best. We need to bring back the super heavyweight division and all these great big giants need to be in that. And we need to go back to men weighing between uh, around 189 pounds to 230 pounds being our heavyweight champion. And if that happens, the attention will draw in on the heavyweight belt and it'll bring boxing back. But I'll tell you what won't bring boxing back. And that's what we saw last night. Out of a natural heavyweight, by the way, who would be Usyk. And if we keep going with these Giants rule things, uh, no, no. No. Uh, boxing would be a lot more interesting. You just don't know it because you don't watch them much and you don't see them much. Uh, but you would know who they were and the sport would be a lot more exciting for you if these guys from uh, maybe 189 pounds if they ch chose to step up the heavyweights to about two, 220 to 230 pounds or so, thereabouts, 235. And uh, you'd see a lot more exciting fights. I'll tell you something else. Usyk is not exciting. That's very boring. And as far as heavyweights go, uh, the only excitement, that, I, that, that I've seen in the past several years that's really excited me uh, and I enjoyed watching and I was on pins and needles the whole time like sport the boxing should be uh, was uh, the three Wilder Fury fights. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for, uh, I mean, I watched them. I watched... Uh, uh, Joshua and uh, Usyk. I watched both those fights, but this is interesting. No, it's like somebody, it's like a pivot competition. Pivoting. And pivoting's good. And we use it. And we use it a lot. But brute force used correctly. Aggression letting the damn hands go, moving forward aggressively. Uh, can blanket all, all that, all this pivoting things that we think hopscotch that we're seeing today. Right? So I don't know. I don't care who this upsets. Uh, if they don't like it.
That's okay. Uh, I did not voice my opinion about the Spence Crawford fight. I knew I knew Bud Crawford was gonna knock him out. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And I stayed out of that. And I think on one uh, boxing show that I happened to be on uh, as a, ge a, a guest for another young boxer, uh, Zeke Castro, who is a great up and coming uh, amateur, I believe I just made a statement. I think Crawford is going to win. But I didn't get into that. Uh, I could have almost told you all how it would have happened. Uh, uh, yeah, and I would put statements out like somebody, you know, in the comments, I'd say, well, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, I didn't want to take the back backlash and uh, uh, by, the, by fans, fanboys, uh, to even make, any commentary about that. So I did. And I don't think I'm going to do that again. So if people want to get on me, rag me out, then they can. Uh, uh, I, sh I should have spoke more about that fight and I feel more foolish now because I would have sat and told everybody almost to a T exactly what was going to happen. I don't know. I got it right. Some of them I get wrong. That one I got right. Uh, and, but watching, uh, there's several, Chisora, that ch there's no need for that no more. It's no, no, in, other than in England. Uh, in my opinion, Dubois, who should have won last night, uh, should just hang it up. He's number one. He's a quitter. Uh, uh, number two, he'll drop down at the drop of a hat. And, uh, the other guy, uh, the Chisora and the, uh, the other black guy that just fought Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson gave him the uppercut. I'm sick of seeing this big mouth. Sick to death of it. That man should be totally irrelevant in, bo in, in boxing as a boxer. So we're seeing a bunch of crummy matchups. And uh, make no mistakes about it. Tyson Fury is the champion right now today. And there's only one real champion, folks. Hate to burst your bubble on that. I could go out and create a belt tomorrow and put it on Joe and say he's the champ. And that's basically what's being done. And I believe Dubois had that WBA regular. And now I'm hearing that he, that Usyk beat him, one good thing to come out of that fight is the possibility of getting that WBA regular champion belt out of there. Why, why not just say all the top 10 heavyweights are champions? Just put world champion number two, world champion, you know, down the line of the top 10. Might as well. It'd make more sense to me if you're going to just be handing belts out all over the place. They hand the belts out because the fighters pay. They pay out of their purses. So, Got to do something about that, too. Good news for the heavyweight division is we have folks coming up like Richard Torres, and there's a lot of others. I just, you know, my brain, I can't remember names very good unless I'm right on top of it day after day after day. Uh, Richard Torres likes Joe. He's very, very optimistic with him. Uh and uh, we appreciate it. But Joe's very optimistic with him. Joe really likes this guy, too. And uh, uh, he's a lefty. And uh, I don't think he's the most exciting guy. I don't think the excitement. Uh, but this kid can fight. And he's got, got a lot of growth he's got to 
got to have it happen. And I hope his aggressiveness uh, increases. Well, folks, what we need is Jack Dempsey's, uh, Mike Tyson's, uh, George Foreman's, Rocky Marciano's. We don't need no more uh, hopscotch and uh, and point getters. We need we need fighters. We need sluggers. That's what makes the sport exciting, right? So that's my take on everything. Um, I believe boxing is trying to show people throughout the world, young boxers, people see these things where they're talking and stuff like that about who's the champion, the big fight. So people that really aren't into boxing even, they get to see it. Hundreds of millions or billions of people see what these boxers say, know who's the heavyweight champion and uh, maybe an exciting middleweight or welterweight at given moments. And they know who these people are, even though they don't watch it. And God's trying to show us. I mean, this has been going on uh, in my, God showed me that that team of Christ professors that were sitting up there are not Christ-like at all. And uh, another one, Deontay Wilder. Uh, speak it, believe it, receive it. I have the spirit in me. My daddy was a preacher. And Fury sitting across there. I have Jesus Christ. I now know I'm going to beat you. You'll see. Speak it, believe it, receive it. And he got his ass handed to him multiple times. God's trying to show us, folks, regardless of who's the winner and the loser, God's showing us in everything that's going on here, in everything, politics, sports, uh, media. God's, God's openly showing everyone. And the problem is you, you have those whom God has intentionally blinded He's done that himself. And then you, and then you have those who, who just can't see. And, and that second group's the, the ones we all feel bad for. Um, uh, God's showing us through sport uh, and through many things that, uh, and, and we used to talk about this when I was a little boy, things that are done secretly in rooms by men because it was men back then that did the working and were in charge of things pretty much in the United States at any rate. And we were always talked about in church, be careful when a group of men go in a room and shut the door. What they're doing in secret is no good for everybody outside of that door. And that's what these people do. Uh, God loves everything in the open and in the brightness of the sunlight. You hear that thing, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Uh, and biblically it is. Uh, these backbiters and haters and uh, that are... Uh, you look around, you can look around all around you in any country. You know, a man's not not ordained by another uh, ordained, very multiple decade experienced preacher that he can be a preacher. You just go out and start a church. God called me. And that, that's not in the Bible. God, does, God doesn't work that way. God will call an ordained minister to go tell you you was called. You don't just start, your feelings start going wild and 
God's told me to go start a church. No, a God has told you to go start a church. But the true God has not. And we've gotten to a point we don't even read the biblical word. You go to church, they don't teach the biblical Bible. They, t- they got a form of godliness, like the Bible said. They'll teach certain sections, but they stay away from a major- vast majority of it because uh, they know they'll be, they'll be found out. They'll be brought out of the secret room. Uh, the greedy, selfish, bad intentions of them will be brought out. I was a kid. Uh, preachers used to work full-time jobs. Uh, not only would they do that, they'd take care of the church grounds and everything else. There would be uh, calls maybe on Sunday morning. Can we have some volunteers we need to paint? Or can we get some volunteers to help us clean up? Now these preachers just lay around on their ass all week, and that's what they do. It's, it's, if God's giving you something, he's going to give it freely. It's not going to take you all week to figure it out. and You work it, what God's giving you. That doesn't work that way. It's just ridiculous what we choose to believe nowadays that we didn't believe when I was a boy. And uh, if you would have told us when I was a boy, this is the way it's going to be. And folks, I just want to give you a warning. You know, almost everybody you're looking at up to this in a power position, be it in boxing, uh, basketball, anything, politics, they're wolves in sheep clothing. And when when you stand there and somebody's saying, For the power, I love Jesus Christ. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's who who you need to be worried about. That's who you really need to. I'm not saying that everybody everybody doing that's a bad person. But I'm saying that's who we need to be in discernment with and judgment with. Is this a good person or is it a bad person? And it's because the falling away of the church has already happened. And it's in progress right now. Happening beautifully accurate to the Bible. And uh, uh, just turn your television on and listen to a preacher. Just, you know, open the phone book, close your eyes and point and go to a church and just see. Do that 10 times and eight of them, you're going to go in and be like, oh my gosh, this ain't in the Bible. Oh my gosh, the Bible preaches against what they're saying is okay. And this mess about giving to a church and you're going to get threefold or sevenfold back. Uh, 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 the treasures that you won't get it back on this earth while you're living on this earth. And that's because God says he saved uh, your your treasures are saved up in heaven for you. So, you know, go tell grandma, don't be giving all your money to to the church expecting uh, a healing miracle or something like that. God freely gives his gifts. So. uh, So the point I'm making is here. Every damn where we look around us is a corrupt mess. And you young people, I feel so bad for you because you're going to be walking through life and you're going to hit a point where you're going to say, everything they've been telling me my whole life was a lie. Uh, That even happened with me, uh, with my university education. Years later, I was... I was, uh, oh my God, I spent all this money and I worked myself to death to get myself through this university. And so much of it was lies. And that's a big regret. So, all right. I hope everyone has a good Sunday. And I hope that the rest of your week is more than anything for any of you, I hope that you have peace. So we'll see you later.